Well, I always sort of tell people when in doubt, zoom out. So it's more important to start, I think, with the long term outlook than the short term outlook, because short term outlook look, tends to be more important for traders and tends to be noise when you have an investment thesis. I believe that Bitcoin, like many are seeing now, is a form of digital gold. It's a store of value and effectively is a hedge against bad behavior by governments and central banks who we know will continue to endlessly print money until there's no value left. Um, it's a deflationary asset mathematically proven it's basically superior to gold in every way shape and form and just with the very basic demand and supply dynamics with the having every four years the supply of bitcoin is cut in half if demand even remains remains the same that means that the number will go up so as you said i'm very bullish on bitcoin i don't really understand how you couldn't be if you understand it and you do the work uh and for me you know if we're talking about 10 20 years down the road i believe it's easily a seven figure asset but if zooming in which is what everybody always wants to hear. What's the price of Bitcoin going to be by the end of the year? What's it going to be in 12 months? First of all, I think it's a bit of a fool's errand to try to attach price gates to price targets because it right. doesn't matter if you're an investor. Um, but I would be very surprised if we didn't see Bitcoin in the six figures, you know, within the next year. It seems like such a high number. People believe that you're being overly bullish when you talk about it. But the price of Bitcoin right now is 47000 Basically, if it doubles, it'll almost be six figures. And just last year, we saw Bitcoin go from 3,800 to 65,000, right? A 2x yeah. move for Bitcoin is effectively nothing. If you consider that it's a store of value, then you got to ask yourself the philosophical question of why it would need to move that much over the next year or two or even 10 years. Why does it need to rally to six or seven figures? Why can't it just stay at current levels, climb at the pace of inflation, well, let's say, and that'll be sufficient as a store of value for most people, right? Sure, but if you consider that, I mean, what, what will be the multiplier on the price of goods in 10 years if governments continue to print money at this rate? Yeah. Well, five times, yeah. 10 times, you know, if you're talking about a decade down the road. So even that puts the price of Bitcoin at $470,000 if the price of goods rises that amount, right? Maybe it won't rise that dramatically, but that, like you said, that's even just adjusting for inflation if the price of Bitcoin never goes up. And knowing that Bitcoin is actually deflationary, and that supply is being cut in half and that demand is increasing. But even if demand remained the same or only slightly went down, the mm -hmm. price should go up. But as for being a store of value, the price cannot stay stable because it has to beat inflation. OK, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about short term price movements and then we'll talk about utility and um, some other topics. Short term, what do you think is the primary driver of price movements? Well, Bitcoin maximalists will probably think I'm a heretic, but it's traders. A heretic, I guess, would be the term, but it, it's traders, right? And we, we saw that, that the evidence is as clear as it gets. From 60000 to 50000 when the price dropped at the beginning of this correction, we saw $10 billion of leverage liquidated. And that was almost a million individual traders had their accounts liquidated. So, you know, you have this small move and then you have this cascade of liquidations because people are over leveraged and it rinses the leverage out of the system. And we saw almost the same thing on the drop from forty. To 30,000. So I think that the amount of leverage being used by retail traders on this asset right now means that there can be very, very dramatic price moves triggered by what would have otherwise perhaps been a smaller price move. I think that Bitcoin is the only free market on the planet. And that if you want to talk about manipulation, take a quick look at the stock market or any other legacy market. We have governments literally printing money to buy the assets to artificially inflate the price of those stocks and assets. It's absolutely Absolutely absurd. That is the definition of manipulation. It's so funny when I hear about people talking about the Bitcoin market being manipulated. If your definition of manipulation is someone with more money can move the market more than someone with less money, then yes, it's manipulated. And also by definition, a free market. People get very upset when price goes against them, but they could have very easily been on the other side of that trade. And if one person with a ton of money moves the market, there's a bid on the other side of the order book for every single sale that that person put through. It's absolutely a free market. People have the right to put their orders wherever they want. And yes, like any free market, people with more money can move that market. Uh, before we move back to Bitcoin, I want to ask you, do you believe in the Ethereum flippening? Do you think one day Ethereum will overtake Bitcoin as the largest coin? I had an interesting guest on my show recently, Rand Nooner, and he made yeah. the argument that it already has. That in every metric except for market cap, effectively, Ethereum has already flipped Bitcoin. It's interesting, even if you look at Coinbase's quarter two earnings report, you'll see that Ethereum had higher trading volumes than Bitcoin in the second quarter. Uh, it's really interesting. So listen, I don't really care if it flips it or not. I'm bullish on both assets and heavily invested in both. And I think that that's just 
a narrative that makes for an interesting conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. I do not think that Ethereum will flip Bitcoin anytime soon in market cap, but in institutional interest, I think is growing tremendously in Ethereum. Like I said, trading volumes, the actual usage of the network is huge. So I think that there's good reason to be very, very bullish on both of those assets. Okay. So then let's go back to Bitcoin. Now you had asked a rhetorical question earlier in the interview. You said, why wouldn't Bitcoin go up any higher? Well, let me give you a fictitious scenario. Suppose most of the developments in, uh, in, in, in cryptocurrencies in terms of technologies and use cases are in the altcoin space. And Bitcoin has pretty much already maxed out in terms of its development. I know that's not true, but suppose going forward that were the case. Well, most of the money, institutional or otherwise, would flow into the altcoin market, wouldn't it? It wouldn't flow necessarily into Bitcoin, which would then be seen as a legacy technology. I, I don't necessarily agree with that because I think that the argument for Bitcoin is that digital gold store of value. And so they're completely okay. different investments with different thesis. You ask Michael Saylor that question and he'll tell you that Bitcoin is digital real estate, that it's the effectively gold and it's the only hedge you get have against inflation. So if you're going to have an asset in your cash reserve to hedge against yeah. the value loss of your dollars, that's Bitcoin, right? What you're talking about is more akin to investing in the Amazons, Googles and Facebooks early, getting in on the Internet in the early 90s. And, and I think that that's what you're looking at with Ethereum and altcoins. I think it's a completely different investment thesis, and I think both will get their allocations. But I think mm -hmm. still at the very core the asset that institutions are going to be most interested in is Bitcoin because it's a proven hedge and store of value. Okay. Let's talk about your uh, bull case then. You mentioned six-figure Bitcoin and seven-figure. Let's start with six-figure Bitcoin first. What's going to get us there? I, I mean, that could happen with just retail. I don't even think that we need a catalyst. I think that just a few more institutional buys and retail uh, FOMO being sort of reinvigorated and we get to six figures. Like I said, it's only a two X basically from here to a hundred thousand. That's a small move. That's that's less than the average of Bitcoin's yearly movement upwards, right? I mean, it does better yeah. than 200% every single year, but you know, I, I'm not, it would be remiss not to admit that if we got another piece of news like an Amazon or a Facebook or a Google putting some Bitcoin into their cash reserve, that that would probably reignite the market the same way that sure. the 1.5 billion Tesla buy seemingly sent the market flying from around 42 K and was the catalyst for the run to 65. So mm -hmm. I think there's plenty of fundamental news that could happen. Another government, another sovereign government like El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as legal tender, uh, central bank adoption. But at the end of the day, and the real key to me to the next major run is probably the approval of an ETF in the United States.